Hey, good morning, everybody. Dave Savage, CEO of Mortgage Coach. Welcome to our Tuesday interview. We have been doing this for like eight, nine years now. Uh, I think I've done hundreds of interviews like this. And today we have Jeff Cohen. What's up, Jeff? Hey, what's up, guys? Super pumped about the topic today. Can't wait. Yeah, well, we're pumped. I think this is my second interview of you. Uh, the first time I saw an interview was when Coach Bill Hart interviewed you. Uh, by the way, folks, you can check out that interview. It is in our YouTube channel. I'll also push a link to that original interview that brought Jeff into the mortgage coach community. And, and that interview was designed not only for loan officers, but for realtors. So, so Jeff, um, you are, is it the number one team and leader in Nebraska? Is that right? Yeah, we've been number one in Nebraska the last three years in unit sales. We sold almost 700 houses last year, uh, going from 70 to 700 in the last six. And then we were just awarded the number two real estate team at Berkshire Hathaway Worldwide. Wow. So mortgage coach community, is this the kind of agent we want to mastermind with? So throughout this call, you can ask any question. We've got Jeff for a full hour. Uh, he is prepared with some lessons for us and some things that help him go from that 70 to 700. But we will have time for Q&A. So you could post those either in our Facebook mastermind um, group. If you're watching the recording of that and you are not part of the Mortgage Coach Productivity Mastermind, get in there. It is a place where the best loan officers in America and even the best realtors in America are networking and partnering and helping each other. So, so Jeff, let's, let's kick this off while we're going to talk about the 70 to 700. If there was one thing that was the key to your success to getting to that first 70, what would that one thing be? You know, it's funny. We talked a little bit about this off air uh, and I didn't answer the question, but birds of a feather flock together. You are an accumulation of the closest three friends that you have. So I leveled up on the people I networked with. Uh, the difference between you and me are the people we meet in the books that we read, the podcasts we listen to, and the people that we have on speed dial. So I decided I'd try to determine what kind of agent I wanted to become. And then I started spending time with those people across the country. I love that. I love that. So by the way, Mortgage Coach community, everybody on this call, you have access to the greatest loan officers in America. I'm interviewing them. They're our YouTube channel. And I do recommend that you connect with them outside of just digital land. Make sure that when you're going to events, you're meeting each other, you're masterminding. So, you know, I'm going to ask one more question that came to my mind because I know that top loan officers, yes, we want to, you know, get the whale. You know, we want to get the number one realtor and have a relationship with them. But that's, that's hard. It takes time. Um, often we find ourselves going after the new agents. But how, any advice on how to pick the agents that are going to make it, you know, and, and that sweet spot for a lender as to how to, how to, how to identify that new agent that's going to make it? and how to best support them, does anything come to mind? Yeah, absolutely. Number one, value. Number two, value. And number three, value. So obviously as a loan officer, your best value is the product you're offering. You have the best loan office, you know, officers, the best back office. But to an agent, that's all noise. What we want is leads. A lot, actually, what, what most agents are waiting for from loan officers is referrals. But I know that loan officers can't refer enough business to keep me happy, especially now that I have a team of 50 agents. So what's better than that for me is money to buy leads. And I know not all of you are in a position where you can enter into marketing service agreements, but that's been a way where my two loan officers right now who are contributing to help pay for our leads have been able to create relationships of trust with my agents and not only get the business that they're paying for, but also the sphere of influence business that the agents are creating on their own. So you have to think of a way where you can offer value through giving them leads or you know paying for leads or giving them scrub leads through your business. That's what's most important to an agent. Yeah, we talk all the time about that. And again, I'm let's be careful. Yeah. First of all, when it comes to compliance, anything we talk about, check with your company, your compliance. We also talk a lot about just being that conversion partner. If you're a loan officer, that hey, you give me a loan, you give me a buyer. One, you, you have a you have a you know you have a greater chance of converting it because you know I've got a great sales process. And then two, because our loan officers use the total cost analysis to help create confidence and clarity for the buyer you know that that buyer has a sense of urgency. It's like, I gotta buy now because the loan officer made it so clear that I buy now. So we talk a lot about that's value. If you can be a conversion partner and a sense of urgency partner, that's value yeah. on its own. Let me, let, me throw this, let me throw this idea out there too. So you talked about how to identify who's gonna be successful. No need 
Just pick the people that are successful. And it doesn't need to be the whales because whales are hard to deal with. Pick the agent that's doing 50 deals a year or 100 deals a year or the aspiring team leader who maybe doesn't have the funds if you do do marketing service agreements. But outside of a marketing service agreement, if you're not wanting to pay to generate leads to that agent, you guys have the ability to generate your own leads and refer those off to agents. I don't think that's anything against compliance. And then my other thought is partner with people that already have an existing database of past clients, current clients, and leads. And instead of paying for leads, you yourself as a loan officer, pay for lead scrubbers. You can hire a lead scrubber for $10 an hour in the United States or you know, as low as $5 an hour virtually. I actually own a company with 120 virtual assistants called thousandcallsaday.com. You could hire one of our callers to scrub the agent's leads that you're trying to partner with. And of course, as they create opportunities, some of those are gonna go back to those agents, but a majority of those are gonna go to you. Because oftentimes, like our conversion ratio is 3%, industry average is half of 1%. So you have these databases with thousands of people. Mine has 200,000, but you have thousands of people. I get 2,000 leads a month. We only convert right now 3% of those 2,000. So what happens to all those other registered leads? Well, my lenders and vendors have access to my entire database and we give them permission to hire virtual assistants or internal scrubbers to dive into our database to find additional opportunities for themselves, even opportunities that may never come through my team. And I think that's probably the biggest missed missed opportunity for lenders in the industry is they always are thinking about converting the deals the agents convert. Why don't you convert deals on your own, which I know some of you do, but to have the focus be partnering with the agent to help them scrub their leads. Of course, if you can turn the lead back to the agent, great. But if not, at least you can capture them for a refinance or for their mortgage with another agent. Love that. So one more idea, because I want to tie this together for the mortgage coach community. We've been talking about how important it is that you're doing annual reviews and you're optimizing your past customer database. By the way, if you're doing that well, you've got a thousand past customers, you are a lead machine for your realtors. Two, I interviewed Danny Harani, one of the top loan officers in the country, and he talked about not only how is he doing annual reviews for himself, but how he's bringing that service to realtors. Because most realtors are not good at, at really mining their database and optimizing the transactions within their database. So you could sure. do that. And then and then lastly, I'm going to be doing a Facebook Live with Mari Smith at 11 o'clock today. Check it out. It's just available to our group, uh, the queen of Facebook. But the advice we've been talking about where you take your LinkedIn database, put it into Facebook, create custom groups, be that digital mayor of 10,000 people. I mean, guys, if you're a modern mortgage professional, one, you've got to deliver a total cost analysis and have an amazing presentation. But you have got to generate your own business through your past customers, through Facebook, through other channels. So it totally aligns with what you're saying right now, Jeff. Yeah. So, so any last thoughts before we get into some of your prepared you know, strategies and ideas on how to go from 70 to 700? Anything else you want to cover? You know, in building these relationships, the book I always refer to is How to Win Friends and Influence People. Agents know that you're just trying to use them for their leads. So when you build that relationship, be a friend, actually get to know the agent, listen to them, listen to their challenges, try to find a solution for their business. I know everyone knows this, but I felt so often like I'll get a, a Facebook message from a loan officer that says, hey, I want to buy you lunch. And it's like, yeah, so do the other hundred loan officers in my market. Now that I'm the number one agent, you never reached out to me before. It just feels really insincere. So if I, figure out a way where you can actually, you know, the best way to connect to people is through other people. So you want to find an in through a friend of a friend. Go to Facebook and see what friends you have in common with the agent that you're wanting to partner with. Reach out to that friend and say, hey, do you know Jeff Cohn? I'd love to sit down and have a lunch with Jeff. Maybe we could all three get together sometime so that you have an in. Don't just directly reach out to them because it's pretty obvious what you're doing. Um, a lunch is an easy way to get a foot in the door, but then you have to have value as well that you can offer them because most people obviously already have a relationship with someone else. And of course, you're never there to steal that relationship. You're just there to add an additional benefit, wherever that benefit might be within the loan products that you have access to. Hey, Jeff, that was a good point. You know, just that that reach out for lunch, coffee. So I'm going to ask two questions. When you think of all the reach outs that a loan officer could make, could be, I'll stop by your office. Let's meet for coffee. Let's meet for lunch. What is the offer, kind of the venue that you're most likely to take? That's part one of the question. Or maybe not you, but let's just say yeah, yeah, an, an agent, agent that's doing 50, well, not someone who's doing less than 30 transactions a year, but let's just say that that 40 to 70 a year yeah. agent, 
What do you think is the, the easiest ask a loan officer could make to get in front so, of? You know, in, in real estate, as we qualify a potential buyer or seller, we go through what we call LP Mama, the acronym to help figure out location, price. Are you working with a mortgage lender, et cetera? I don't know what the acronym is in the lending world, but the things I'd be looking for is inefficiencies with the current lender that the agent's working with. What kind of loan products do they not have? What kind of interest rates are they offering? What kind of hidden fees exist? And you need to find a solution where you can do better for the customer. If the start of the relationship is based on you helping the agent find a better solution for the customers they're serving, and you're not asking for all the business, you're just asking for a percentage, you want to date, of course, before you get married. The caveat is then lead generation and lead scrubbing. You might even be open to a conversation about helping offset or partner in paying for some type of a, um, a CRM system like Follow Up Boss or we use Boomtown. I want to see someone put skin in the game. What I'm sick of and what I was sick of six years ago as an individual agent is people that just wanted me to give them part of my leads. In every industry, everyone wanted a piece of the lead because as the agent, we can control where that business goes. The people I wasn't sick of are people that were willing to put, um, you know, where, help make, help cover my overhead expenses and actually put money towards something that was going to help me offset my costs and have more success converting more real estate transactions. And so each of you have to be willing to go out there, do an interview, ask questions and listen and find where those needs are and then become that solution for those agents with whom you're wanting to partner. Everyone has different challenges and different dysfunctions and you have to use your expertise to try to determine what that is. Okay, I totally align on that. And then what do you think is the easiest venue? You know, do you think it's, you're, you think an agent's more likely to say, I'll meet you for coffee than lunch? Or do you think they like the lunch meeting with the with the? If lunch someone's going to buy me lunch at the restaurant of my choice, that's going to be my number one. Hey, pick your favorite restaurant. Let's go get food. Everyone eats. That's the best part about meeting for lunches or happy hour. Everybody eats. Everybody drinks something. Um, let's just go grab a drink or let's go grab a lunch and be willing to drop fifty dollars on a lunch. It's go, it's okay. That fifty dollars could make you five thousand in one deal. So go take an agent out to lunch every single day. A great book on this topic that was written for re residential real estate, but it applies to every industry, is The Seven Levels of Communication by Michael Mayer. Michael talks Good about book. how there's, you guys, have you guys talked about that on this show before? Well, there's, Michael's been a guest, he's a friend. Okay. And, yeah. Yeah. But, but by the way, point out, because not everybody's read the book. Yeah, so Michael talks about these yeah. four informational zones of communication, which is like email, flyers, postcards, stuff like that. You can't ask for an appointment, you can't close a deal giving people information. What matters most is the um, influential zone. Those influential zones are face-to-face -face communication at a restaurant. And he actually breaks down the process in which you should engage in face-to-face -face meetings. And essentially in a nutshell, let's say you're having an appointment, all of your appointments should be at the same venue and you should control it where your waiter or waitress isn't interrupting. So maybe they come once for refills, but they don't talk. And then you also wanna set it up where, let's say you have a 10 o'clock appointment with a, a, a agent. Well, then at 11 o'clock, you have a, a, a meeting with someone else that you think would add value to that agent. Maybe it's a home inspection company or home warranty company, and you become a unit connector. So you're adding value not only through the value you can offer, but through the relationships you have. And so the person that you meet with at 11 not only offers value to your agent, but your agent can offer value to them as well. And so you piece together all your face-to-face -face appointments. Maybe just in one day, you go agent, in investor, lender, financial planner, agent, and you just rotate through people all afternoon at the same venue. Um, and you're just building uh, value for all of the different relationships that you have. So by the book, Michael Mayer did a great job, I think, painting a picture. And it doesn't have to be at a restaurant. I just think it's easier to keep people out of your office, no distractions, and just go meet somewhere that's neutral. I love that. You know, just call it the mastermind lunch session. Yep. And uh, I will bring Michael in soon, guys. We'll get him back in the community. So, so let's get into the content we planned on. I, I don't know whether you have slides, whether you want to share anything, but I want to I want to hear how you went from seventy to seven hundred using uh, your your acronym class. Yeah, for sure. So what I'm going to take you through is uh, like you said, class, which is culture, leads, accountability, systems, and strategies. And I tried to share. I know you've given me access. I, I'm not for whatever reason my PowerPoint's not loading with GoToWebinar running, Dave. So. As I speak, I don't know if there's a way I emailed that PowerPoint over to you. Maybe you could share that up there with the audience. Yeah, I, give me a second, start setting it up, yeah, and yeah. I will see if yeah, I can no get worries. it going. So you guys, my biggest thing as an individual agent, uh, my, one of my biggest struggles was I was having a hard time living and leading the life of my dreams. And so I, I was working 60 hours a week, trading time for money, like a lot of us have experienced. And I wanted, I was making more money than I had ever dreamed of, but I wasn't living the life that I wanted to live. And so 
I went out and started interviewing top agents, just like I shared at the very beginning of the show today. And I just started calling people. And one of my hesitancies was thinking people weren't going to be willing to share with me. And what I experienced was the exact opposite. Not only were they willing to share, they were willing to allow me to come and visit them at their brick and mortar. And I visited over 50 real estate teams over the course of two years and did face-to-face, in-office, brick and mortar, um, informational interviews where I would learn about their lead generation process, their lead conversion process, the way that they partnered with lenders and vendors to help them offset costs. Everything you know, from lead gen to accountability to culture. And I started taking all of the things that I thought I wanted to apply to my team in Omaha and applying them. And then of course, all the things that I thought those teams had done wrong, I, I took those out and didn't apply those things. And so over the course of 12 months, we went from 70 to 240 transactions. And the big game changer there was I started adding leads and I was adding agents and I was adding training and accountability with those agents. And so the three pillars of building and scaling a successful business, I always tell people is recruiting, training, and retaining by offering value. And so the first part of this, if Dave can pop that on there, um, we'll so, get into this. So, by the way, the only attachment I have is some letter uh, saying stop selling, start building. I've got like this video outline. Okay. I don't have here, an actual PowerPoint. It was one. It was one below that. I just hit send again on there. Okay, sounds good. Yep, no worries. I'll get it. I'll get it up in a minute. Yeah, no worries. So the first part that I thought would be the foundation of building a successful business, and I think most of you will understand this and agree, was building a culture, the right type of culture, which breed which breeds success. And our culture is defined by our why. Why are we in the business? Why are we trying to make money? Why do we wake up every day? And a lot of us, even people listening today, maybe haven't answered themselves that question. Maybe they've said their why is to make 100000 a year just to make ends meet and pay bills. Well, that's not a passionate that's not a passionate enough why, in my opinion, to get people excited and jacked about showing up to work every day and making prospecting calls and meeting with clients and dealing with a lot of the failures and challenges that we experience in the real estate business as loan officers or as agents. And so every agent that joins my team has to create a vision board, essentially a board that uh, has images that represent the life that they want to lead and live today and what they want to aspire to and accomplish in the next five years. And so people will put things on there, of course, like, you know, things like houses and cars and Louis Vuitton purse or whatever it might be. But other things on there is like children going, seeing the ocean for the first time, um, investing in real estate, uh, sending their, all of their children to college. I mean, lots of different things. And everyone has different goals. So our culture right out of the gate was to help people define their why question. And then everyone has a different amount of money they need to make to be able to accomplish their why. So let's say in Omaha, Nebraska, to live the American dream with the house and the dog and go on a few trips a year and put some money away for savings, you need to make a six-figure income. We reverse engineered how many calls each agent needed to make every week to be able to earn six figures. And we know that it takes, in residential real estate, 150 outbound calls to have one sale. Our average commission is about $6,000. If the agent retains 70% of that, which is our average agent retention, um, if we look at our gross commission income, they keep about 70% of the gross commission. We figured out that they need to do 36 transactions to make six figures. So we take 36 transactions times 150 outbound calls divided by 50 weeks out of 52 weeks, assuming that they're going to take two weeks off. And it breaks down to about 125 outbound calls a week. And then we hold them accountable to making those calls, but they can call whoever they want. And we track the calls um, every week and we make them an announce in a team setting, how many calls, actually what their call goal is, how many calls they actually made, how many people they talked to, out of the people they talked to, how many appointments they went on, and out of the appointments they went on, how many contracts they executed, how many they're currently negotiating, and how many total hours they spent prospecting. And we've been doing this for three years. And we've been winning because of consistency. Every week, 30 to 50 agents show up at my office and they report these numbers. They then meet one-on-one -on -one with our accountability coach for 20 minutes every week and he goes in and inspects these numbers. So not only do we just take their word for it, we go into our back end CRM, which we use Boomtown, and he can actually see that they made the calls that they said that they were gonna make. But we even take it a step further. Um, if you guys have read the four hour work week by, week by Tim Ferriss, he talks about the 80-20 rule and how 20% of your input usually gets you 80% of the output. He likens it onto a bean field. So he said, if you have a mile square bean field and you plant beans a mile square, you usually will get 80% of your crop out of 20% of the dirt. I have a hard time believing that. And you guys correct me if I'm wrong, if that's not what he said, but that's how I'm remembering it. So you plant a mile square bean field 
and 20% of your field gives you 80% of, of your crop. So I know 100% it's the exact same thing for loan officers and it's the exact same thing for agents. 20% of their time that they spend 50 hours a week grinding out gives them 80% of their income. So it's our job as the you know lead loan officer running a mortgage team or a lead team agent running a real estate team to help each individual agent find their 20% of dirt, find the area that they're excelling in that they're generating 80% of their revenue from. And so we ask our agents to generate leads from three main categories. There you go, Bill's got this, or Dave's got this pulled up. Um, we, we really recommend, go into leads, it's the next one. Um, we recommend that they generate leads from three different categories. One is sphere of influence. Everyone knows about sphere. Over 65% of my team deals out of 700 came from sphere last year. The second is prospecting. Prospecting is anything outside of your sphere, like just listed, just sold, expired, FISBO, open houses, masterminds. It's anyone that doesn't know your name, but the lead wasn't from the internet. And then the third category is internet leads. So as you see on this slide, I generate 2,000 leads a month. I give out 30 leads a month per agent. And we found that that's the point of diminishing returns. If you give out 50 leads, the agents convert one deal a month out of the 50. If you've got 30 leads, they convert one deal a month out of the 30. If you gave out 15 leads, they'd only convert one deal every other month. So 30 is our sweet spot. Um, as you can see in my little spreadsheet there, you'll see, I think that's the last year worth of leads. We generated 8,492 registered leads off of Boomtown paid advertising. That's mostly Google ads and Facebook ads. We spend about a dollar a click. It takes us 10 clicks to get a lead and 33 leads to get a sale. So I'm spending around $330 to have one executed contract that makes me $6,000, of which I keep half, which is $3,000. That's a 10x return, 1,000% return, but my return's infinite because my lenders are paying for all the leads. So we've built a model that essentially our bottleneck, all we're looking for is more agents to plug in, but back to the culture, it's hard to find agents that are willing to work the leads, as all of you guys have probably experienced as well. People want to, a lot of agents just want to sit back and let their referral business come in. It's the easy, low lying fruit, and that's fine for 30, 40, maybe 50 deals a year, but any agent that's wanting to make two, three, four hundred thousand dollars a year in most places across the country can't just survive off their sphere, especially if they want to leverage their team and start building out additional agents and being able to offer leads as part of the value prop to retain those agents. So that last slide, Dave, if you want to go back to that, that shows the three different buckets, sphere, prospecting and Internet leads and then different areas within each of those lead sources. And we're going to give you these slides so you don't need to take down notes or screenshot this. Um, it'll show different ideas within each of those buckets where agents can be the most successful. But we don't need, need we don't just say, hey, just spend a third of your time in each of these areas. When we say make 125 or 150 calls a week, we look at where we were successful the year before. And if they did 70% of their deals making outbound prospecting calls to expired leads, we're going to recommend they spend 70% of their time calling outbound, you know, doing outbound calls to expired leads. And if they got, you know, 80% of their deals from their CrossFit gym, we're probably gonna recommend they start a CrossFit gym. So we're gonna really help each agent identify the areas where they are stronger. Um, from a lead conversion standpoint, everyone talks about what are some of the best lead conversion strategies. On the bottom of that slide, you'll see what we do when a lead is new or qualified. That's the first 14 days. We make 10 total calls in the first 14 days. We make three calls the first day, send a text message, leave a voicemail. Over the next 13 days, we make seven more calls, send a text, leave a voicemail. That's done by my agent and our virtual assistant. So on a lead rotation day, my agent gets one lead day every 30 days. And they also get a virtual assistant for eight hours on their lead day to help them convert other leads or make outbound prospecting calls. And then the onus is on my agent over the next 30 days before their next lead day to make sure they get the total of 10 calls in, two voicemails, two text messages. Also in the Boomtown system, when a lead comes through and they're looking at property, the system will automatically through artificial intelligence, start sending email updates to that potential buyer or seller based on the homes they were looking at when they were on the site without the agent ever having to set anything up. And then we've also written a chain of drip emails that go out to potential buyers and or potential sellers. And we have created those for the new and qualified category, the hot category, the nurture category, the watch category, the archive, closed, pending, um, trash. And those run for 10 years. So if we don't get a hold of someone in the first two weeks, we place them in other categories with drips that are running to try to engage so that they're speaking, engaging with my agents at some point. And mixed into those smart drips or drip emails are also text messages. So they'll usually get two or three emails, then an auto text, then two or three more emails, then an auto text. And the whole goal 
is trying to get people on the phone to set up an appointment. So my agents have been trained that the entire focus of every outbound prospecting call or face-to-face -face communication is setting up a buyer presentation or a listing presentation, which we do on in iBooks Author. Um, it's a professional like PowerPoint presentation created through Apple. Uh, they use them at the, like the university level, so you don't have to go you know slide one, slide two, slide three. You can jump around based on what the client wants to talk about. And every person we we meet with, we either try to sign an exclusive buyer agency agreement that lasts for 12 months with a potential buyer or a listing agreement that lasts for 12 months with a potential seller, independent of how long until they're buying or selling. So I'll stop there. That was a long, a long chain there, Dave. You have any follow-up questions to any of that? We've covered culture got, and so far. I got, I, I got lots. And by the way, mortgage coach community, if you have questions, bring it on. We have time for it. So, so first of all, it, I don't know. Have you read the book, The Conversion Code by Chris Smith? No. Is that, okay, great book. I Sounds would just cool. say a lot of the ideas that you talked about, Chris covered in that interview, and I did want to plug that. Uh, if you're watching this in the recording, I'll put a link below to Chris Smith's interview on the conversion code, uh, how to get someone on the phone. If you want to hear more details on that, check it out. Uh, by the way, what was the tech that you said that you're using so that people can have a non-linear? Yeah, just I book author. It's free, I'm pretty author. sure. Yeah. Got it. I book author. Uh, yep. Someone asked that. Uh, someone just said, let's see what they said. Oh, someone asked me to have you repeat some things, but I'm going to throw that back to you guys. If there's something you want Jeff to repeat, that's why this is recorded. It'll be in the YouTube channel. Make note, we are at 927. Yep. Maybe it was around 920 he said it. Go back and listen to the recording. Just listen to the whole thing. You just go slow motion. People tell me all the time I say too much, but just go slow, watch it again and again. I hear people say they'll watch podcasts like three or four times. My thing is I only get to come on every six months, so I really want to offer you guys as much value as possible. But I do want to offer out there for anyone like me who's a high D personality on the disc test, challenge anything I'm saying. If you have any disagreements with the audience, let's get some challenges out there. You guys feel free to challenge me on anything I say today. Um, I think it makes it for some fun dialogue back and forth. So if anybody has any questions or wants to call me out, feel free to do so. Bring it on, guys, and I will I will do the challenger questions at the end. And by the cool. way, I will challenge you, so be ready for a little bit of debate on this. Bring it. All right. All right. All right. Let's, go to the next, let's go to the next slide on accountability. Cool. So we got into culture. You know, we talked about leads. I talked about how you want to recruit, and that's the same for building your mortgage team. You want to retain by offering value, and you have to keep giving people training. If you don't, they will leave you. As a true leader, you're constantly serving your followers. You're also giving everyone within your organization the ability to be just like you. How often, think of you at your, you when you were a brand new loan officer, how often were you led by a senior loan officer or the person that ran the bank who told you that you should stop writing loans, you should stop servicing, and you should start a mortgage team? In real estate, no broker ever tells a realtor to stop selling houses. My war cry to everyone in every industry is to stop being a hamster on the wheel and start owning a business that will build and grow without you so that you can live and lead the life of your dreams while teaching others to do the same. So on my real estate team, every single agent is told to not sell real estate and to build a team around themselves where they can use their expertise and mentorship to help other agents sell real estate, who then eventually will stop selling real estate and help other agents sell real estate. And that has given me the ability to open up nine other businesses in addition to my real estate team that I opened six years ago. And I got into title, insurance, flipping, coaching. This elite ERS stands for Elite Real Estate Systems, which is our coaching business, helping other teams stop selling real estate and start building businesses. And the list goes on and on. I talked about my call center. And so what's amazing is, is you stop worrying so much about focusing on the day-to-day -day grind of servicing leads and more on helping other people build successful businesses within the loan officer world or real estate world. It opens up other opportunities as well because you actually finally have the time and the mental capacity to put yourself in other industries. So just wanted to put that out there as a side note. So accountability, next step. Um, we have several bullets I'll cover. Weekly team meetings. We get together three times a week. Um, Mondays is accountability. Wednesdays and Fridays is team training. Our coaching business was born out of our team trainings. For 17 bucks a month, an individual residential agent can actually watch all of my flagship team's trainings out of my Omaha office. We put a $50,000 studio in. If you guys want to see examples of this, go out to EliteRealEstateSystems.com. This would be a value add you could offer an agent you'd partner with. You could pay $17 a month and give them access to some of the best real estate agent training in the country, eight hours a month for $17. 
So then we also have a team leader product, which gets them 20 hours of content a month. It teaches them how to become a team leader. And there's topics that we don't allow the individual agents to have access to, which is all about leveraging and scaling a real estate business. Um, a success coach. Um, if you guys have, you, Dave, have you guys talked about the, um, oh, what's it called? I have it over here somewhere. Um, it's essentially a book about um, helping people uh, lead and live the life of their dreams by assigning them a success coach. They ended up dream manager. Thank you. I'm so glad I got that. The dream manager. I'm saying thank you to my conscience, by the way. So the dream manager, have you guys talked about that book, Dave? We, we have not talked about it, but coaching is big in our community. So go ahead. This is okay, right cool. on topic. In a nutshell, this guy's running a janitorial company with a thousand janitors. And he's having a problem with retention. He's losing like a fourth of his workforce every three months. And he thinks the problem is money because that's always what we go to first, right? I'm not paying them enough. So he starts to tell his board of directors, hey, let's pay everybody $2 more an hour. And they said, you know what? Let's do a survey. Let's really find out if the issue is money or if it's something else. And what they found was the actual issue was transportation. A lot of people in the janitorial world didn't have transportation. They used public transportation and their shifts were usually night shifts and there wasn't nearly enough public transportation to get them to and from work. So they would quit. So the company decided instead of upping everyone two bucks an hour out of a thousand people, they'd essentially create their mini Uber and have van services that would take people to and from all their job sites and retention like tripled. And then a year later, same issue, more retention issues. They thought, okay, we should probably pay everyone more money. They went through this whole process again, did a survey and found that no one wanted to be a janitor when they grew up. It was a stepping stone job to start a painting business or a roofing business or some type of other business. And the janitorial role was just a stepping stone. But a lot of people who didn't, who weren't educated, maybe didn't even have high school education, don't know the steps that they need to take. And so this company, which is incredible, decided that they would hire financial planners and life coaches that would meet with these janitors if they wanted to on a weekly basis. Essentially, they became their success coaches, their life coaches. And they watched people leave the company within two or three years and start a painting company, buy their first house ever out of anyone in that family's generation before. I mean, all of these success stories, the book will outline. But the idea is back to our culture conversation about helping people define their why and then helping them achieve their why. There's a big difference in people just creating a vision board and then you taking the next step to make sure your agents or your loan officers are actually checking off the items that are on the vision board. So we spend $84,000 a year on a success coach who meets with all of our agents every week and holds them accountable to the goals they've set for themselves. Our team has no minimum expectations. We do not tell people how many houses to sell a year. We don't tell people how many calls to make a year. We tell people to live and lead the life of their dreams and we help them do that through all the systems and strategies our team has built. And then we hold them accountable to doing that in this weekly one-on-one -on -one meeting. And so when our agents stand up on a Monday morning, they say that they haven't made their calls. They'll say, my call goes 125. I only made 30 calls. My, aunt, my question to them is, which item would they like to remove from their vision board? That's a heavy question. They've just failed themselves. They failed their family. Which vision board item do you want to take off? Because unfortunately, if you don't put in the time, you're not going to be able to have the benefit of, of whatever you have on that vision board. And so agents understand that. And that's what the the thing that's pressuring them to be successful is that they want to obviously achieve those vision board items that they've set for themselves. Conversion so best practice. How, yep, go ahead, Dave. Hey, real quick, how, how long does it take for someone to get those 150 calls? What do you find, you know, the We're average using amount of photo? You can make 100 calls an hour. We use Mojo Dialer. It's super easy. Hour and a half. My agents can hit their call goals every week in an hour and a half. And just for any loan officers listening that know that there's agents out there that make a lot of outbound calls, I know 10 agents that make over a million dollars a year and they're servicing the leads who spend four hours a day making outbound calls and they're all on Mojo Dialer. They're averaging 400 calls a day. And a lot of you probably are like, well, why? who cares about the call? What matters most is the contact or the appointment. And I agree, you need to give people the activity that's gonna get them the result. You don't go to a baseball player and say, hit home runs. You go to a baseball player and say, get in the batting cages and practice swinging. So the phone call is the beginning to the end. And we know on average out of 150 calls, it's going to equal one final sale. I didn't share the conversions with you guys. If you make 10 calls in residential and it should be the same numbers for you guys, actually five outbound calls get you one connect, nine connects get you one appointment, one and a half appointments gets you one converted deal. And so this is why my focus for all my agents is meet as many people as you can in person because one out of three are going to end up buying or selling with you. So you want to make, you know, like we back to our six figure income. 36, if you can go on whatever, 112 or 118 appointments, that's going to end up being a six-figure income. So that's a big focus for us is getting our agents in front of people.
I love that. So guys, I mean, he broke down the map. We are at 9.35, you know, listen to that again. But as Jeff said, listen to the whole thing again. Um, and now one person did ask a question, how to stay motivated. And I think you had a really good answer. You know, everybody has these vision boards and it's like, what do you want to remove from the vision board? If you could give me one more leadership conversation. Is this person asking how they themselves need to stay motivated or are they asking how to help other people stay motivated? Well, why don't you answer that both ways? Give, give, give us a little more love around that because we know that's a big yeah. issue out there in the market. So a lot of people love to be around high energy individuals. I'd consider myself one of those high energy individuals. Um, bird, like I said before, and this is the cliche, but birds of a feather flock together. If you become more motivated as a leader, those around you will become more motivated. And don't be scared to be yourself and to be authentic. Everyone, millennials, Z and Y gen, want to see authenticity. They want to see their leader make mistakes, say the wrong thing, look stupid, be willing to put themselves out there. That's who people follow. And when you do make a mistake as a leader, the best thing you can ever do is say, hey, guys, I made a mistake. I did it wrong. I treated you wrong. I said the wrong thing. I offended the team. I embarrassed us. And I'm sorry. Let's move forward. And people can get past that. What they can't get past is a, a leader that can never admit that they're wrong, who constantly puts people down or makes people feel bad about themselves. And I know this is like, you know, what is this? Are we at kindergarten level here talking about how to interact with, with other humans? Uh, but people really do struggle with this, especially in a leadership role, because they have a perception that they need to be something that they used to perceive as powerful. But the truth is just be a, a little kid and people will love you for that and, and follow you for that. As far as being motivated, I get that's like my number one question when I'm out and speaking and stuff. People will say, you know, why are you so motivated? What gets you motivated? I'm really hyped up on life. I, I think that the more wins you have, the more excited you get. Um, the smallest win, you know, in the military, they talk about how important it is to make your bed at the beginning of the day at 430 in the morning or whenever they start their day, because then you get a small win. Um, when paying off debt, they always say pay off the smallest balance first because then you have a small win. And so I would suggest to be more motivated, win in areas that you're not used to winning. Maybe it's simply getting your workout in for 30 minutes, getting your journaling in, reading your Bible, uh, doing your yoga class, walking your dog, some, um, having a conversation with your mom and dad, whatever it might be that you're not doing, those small wins will start adding up to really, really big wins. And it's honestly all of these small and simple things that will lead to huge results. It's just being consistent at the mundane month after month, year after year to get it into a point where, for example, for me, I have this team that went from 70 to 700 and everyone's like, whoa, 700 deals. But for me, it's it didn't just arrive like that. I mean, it's just been grinding out all these small things like I've been talking about already just in the last 40 minutes over and over again, week after week, month after month, doing all the boring things. And that will get you jacked. When you're consistent and successful at all the small stuff, I think you'll start to be way more motivated. And so for a team leader, help those following you to, to be successful in the small things and celebrate those small wins. And then for an individual, start doing the small things. If you already thought of a couple of things, you're like, oh, I could start doing that. Just do it today. Do it. Yeah. And, and I, by the way, good segue and win by noon. In our community, there's a planner put out by Top Love Books, man. I don't know if you've heard it. It's called the Win by Noon Real Estate Space. And so, guys, you know, it's the little things that matter. It's win by noon, and it, you'll have the energy you need. So we've yeah, only got it. about 20 minutes left, and I know we've got a few letters to go. Let yep. me know what, what to do next. So the last slide I, I want to cover, or sorry, on accountability, the last bullet I want to cover is Gecko Board. So here is an example of what our Gecko Board looks like. You want to motivate a sales team. You're good. You can go back. If you want to motivate a sales team, you throw up all of their numbers in front of everyone every week. They, this Gecko board tracks their outbound calls, their individual unit sales, their volume. So you'll see this is as of like yesterday. Our team's already done 150 sales this year for 33 million. Our average commission so far this year is $6,500 uh, per deal at 2.88%. And then you can see all these little meters. What we've done is we take the agent's goal that they've set for themselves based on life they want to live, based on the vision board they created. Let's say that's 36. We don't just say 36 divided by 12, which is three deals a month, because we know a majority of the sales happened in the second and third quarter. So we look at the year before and see what percentage of sales took place in each month. And then we apply those percentages to whatever their overall sales goal is. And we'll put their individual monthly goal below the meter. So I know it's hard to see from here, but you'll see those big meters. Uh, the rainbow with like a two or a one above it, that's how many deals they've realized this month. Below in that tiny little gray square, it shows the number of sales that they have to sell that month. 
and this meter is constantly running. And if they hit their sales goal for that month, it turns green. So you'll see the person on the bottom right corner, there's a little green square there. On my screen at my office, it's an 80 inch flat screen and this thing's always living there. Um, if you guys wanna see an example of this, go to dashboard1.omahaselite.com or dashboard2, it's just the number two, .omahaselite.com. Um, dashboard two is the one you're looking at here. Dashboard one are all of our analytics, which showcase what percentage of our deals are coming from each of our lead buckets, how many outbound calls we've made, and what those calls to contact conversions are, et cetera. It also tracks, we track how many showings our buyers go on before they go under contract. Right now, I think it's around six showings before they go under contract. And then we track on all of our listings that we sell, how many showings take place before our listings go under contract. So that we can have conversations with our potential buyers and sellers to say, you can expect to look at five to six homes before you purchase or to a seller, we're gonna need to create seven showings before we can get your house under contract. So as far as a motivating factor, this is a great way to motivate your sales team. You guys can build this using Google Sheets, essentially Excel on Google, and then you link it to these little cells on uh, Gecko Board. It costs $50 a month to have access to two sheets. So you guys can check that out, Gecko's G-E-C-K-O boards. Um, if you do a Google search in, uh, images for Gecko boards, you'll see there's tons of really cool fancy ways to track information and widgets that they provide to you on there. All right, strategies, or sorry, systems. Um, the, the image here is the image of Tesla. I don't know if you guys have watched any documentaries on this, but that's the Tesla factory making Teslas. I think they have probably one of the best mechanical systems I've seen. It's pretty impressive building luxury cars. So the backend system that you create for your loan officers will play a major role in retaining loan officer talent. Of course, they don't want to have to be messing with all the all the weeds. Your best salespeople should be spent, spending their time making outbound prospecting calls and winning clients. Your best back office individuals should be processing the paperwork, following up with the clients, dotting the I's and crossing the T's. So we use dot loop for teams with our residential real estate team, which provides an entire contract to close solution for my agents. So when an agent joins my team, their job is prospecting for leads, going on appointments and signing exclusive agency agreements and listing agreements. Everything else can be done by someone else and should be. So we train the agent to use showing assistants and listing negotiators. We train the agents to use our back office admin staff um, to handle all the paperwork and all the documents so that the agent can spend the time doing the highest income producing activities. So you see our next bullet there's showing assistants. My agents pay our showing assistant anywhere between five to 10 bucks a showing. And they say to their client, hey, when you find the house you wanna write an offer on, I'd like to come on the second showing and I'll write the offer for you. But the agent doesn't need to spend their time being a professional door opener. Um, operations manager, I didn't wanna be the one, everyone's like, dude, I would never want 50 agents. I'm like, why not? And they're like, well, I don't have to manage 50 agents. I don't manage 50 agents. I hired a direct report who's the success manager. He's also the office manager. He runs the agent staff. So anytime an agent has a question, they reach out to him. If he can't answer it, he reaches out to me to see what my answer would be. And then I kick it to him and he responds back to the agent. Same thing with back office. We have seven full-time admin. We have a full-time sign runner. Um, we have a listing coordinator, a buyer coordinator, a client care specialist. My ops manager, who also does commission checks and runs all of our marketing, he is in charge of all the back office roles. He's the direct report for them as well. So the only two people that I have to meet with every week for, for 30 minutes to hold accountable to run a business that's generating $3 million a year is my ops manager and my success manager. And they're the only two that can come to me. No one else is allowed to come to me with questions on anything pertaining to their roles. Their responsibility is to go to my two direct reports if they have issues. Trainers, I spend about 5,000 a month on two really high level trainers, um, training on agent content and new agent content. This is part of, uh, like I told you, the coaching company we have, we stream all these trainings, make them available to my agents in my, in my office. And then my agents can also attend all of our trainings virtually. Um, this is the future. Everyone always says, What's, how's the industry gonna change down the road? No one wants to go to a box to work. No one should have to, especially in the loan officer world or in the agent world. Unless you're meeting with a client, everything we do, we should be able to do from a laptop anywhere in the world. And so we offer a training, accountability, pretty much full office, um, full office solution virtually. And so that's our big play going down the road in the next 10 years is giving agents across the world the ability to be on our team Right now they're doing it through our coaching company. Eventually they'll be able to do it legally through our brokerage. Um, and then subject matter experts, back to the culture play, we allow anyone that's an expert at any one thing, the ability to train our team. So if someone's really great with condos or Facebook posts or you know, walking door knocking, we give them the ability to get in front of the entire team and train. So look for talent in your office. Even somebody that's not even at your own office might be willing to come in and 
share you know their best practices around one point um, we have a very big abundant mindset um, we'll let agents from across our entire city across brokerage brands come into our office for any of our trainings we have an open door policy any monday wednesday friday anyone's allowed to be a part of omaha's elite real estate groups trainings and that's the mindset i think that's going to help businesses going into the future it's also going to help you recruit new loan officers and for us new agents and the last thing is um strategies so if you want to pull up that picture of me on a that's in moab last year in my raptor um i was strategically trying to navigate some boulders which was pretty exciting um i talked earlier msa's marketing service agreements obviously not all companies allow these so check through legal to make sure it's okay but for most agents they look for loan officers that can enter into an msa to help them offset their lead gen costs we also charge broker commissions so another great way for a real estate agent to offset some admin costs is to charge a fee every deal so i require my agent to collect 599 dollars every buy contract and 999 dollars every sell contract the agent's trained on how to collect that from the client. For example, on the buy side, they tell the client that they'll get the $599 paid towards their buyer costs. You guys have probably seen this in contracts before. So they write in there that the seller to pay up to $10,000 or $7,000 towards buyer's closing costs, prepaid, escrows, insurance, and broker commission and any other allowable expenses. On the sell side, it's actually just straight out of their commission. So it's like 7% or 6% commission plus the $999. If our agent can't collect the broker commission, it comes out of their pocket. And that's how we're covering the cost of our back office solution. So we spend $400,000 a year on our back office, all of our admin roles, but I 100% zero base that. I do not take on any costs on my profit and loss statement. It's completely offset by charging these broker fees. So when my team grossed 3 million last year, 70% went to agent commissions. I, I actually retained 30% net profit off my GCI. When you look at most businesses, they're gonna keep anywhere between 10 to 15% um, net profit off of their GCI. So we're doubling that because of strategies like um, broker commissions and marketing service agreements. And then staying in constant contact, guys, the successful businesses of the future are gonna know how to engage with their audiences virtually. Um, there's lots of ways to do this. Obviously an email, which is the least effective based on what Michael Mayer's book says. We do send emails every two weeks to 200,000 people. In that email, I have a video. We're really playing a lot now with Instagram, Facebook, and Snapchat because the generation of the future doesn't even have a Facebook page. So you have to figure out how to stay in constant contact with these different, you know, millennials, Z and Y gen, the different generations going forward. And so we're spending a lot of time and energy. Um, if anyone's a Facebook friend of mine, you'll see a post from yesterday. I started a committee at a high school with 10 high school kids and we meet every month. We call it the Z committee, a Z generation committee. And we talk about how technology is gonna impact businesses going into the future. And so I get to engage with these amazing high school kids from one of the top high schools in my state. And they're constantly coming up with ideas of how I can better engage with potential clients and all the different businesses I own as technology continues to advance so fast. So that would be something I'd recommend all of us do. It's free, put together a group of people either at a high school or within your church or any community, friends, family, whatever, who wanna have conversations around how technology can affect and impact your business so that you can always have a, a leg up on your competition. And then the last thing I'll say is just always be open to building multiple streams of, it, of revenue. Don't just think loan officer is the only role. If there's something else that you're in, considering getting into, I would always recommend looking at parallel businesses. Obviously, real estate would be an obvious one. Investing in residential, commercial, multifamily, flipping property. Um, I, call, I started a call center because I was using virtual assistants and saw there was a huge need for better trained callers and a better back-end process to hold those callers accountable and to train them. Hey, we have 10 minutes left, that's it, that's class. Thank you guys for being so patient. I talk a lot and I talk fast. I love it, hey, you, you, you crushed it. So there were a lot of takeaways. So one, I would love if there was a quote that Jeff said or an idea that you think would help you be more successful, what was it? First of all, hopefully you've written it down and share that with us. When I share the recording of this, I'm also gonna put a question in, in the chat. So be, be prepared to, mastermind around this. So also, I've got a lot of questions. I'm gonna to get to those. Um, anybody else that has a question, get it down here, because this is also not the last time I'm gonna interview Jeff. Would love to have some questions stacked for the next one. So you talked about multi-channel communication, and you know, do you have some scripting that you teach your team to ask families, you know, how do you want me to communicate? Because it comes up all the time. Some people want text, email, more people are using Facebook Messenger. Um, yeah. 
do you, how do you address that multi-channel communication relationship with your clients and and what are some of the most common call it new forms of communication awesome question um i love it we for one make sure that when my agents are trying to follow up with a lead we're not just following up in one medium which would be the, the traditional ones a phone call uh, when i talked about those 10 touches one's going to be a phone call one's going to be a facebook message and what's cool about boomtown when someone registers with an email address it'll go find their facebook account and you can message them right from the back end of boomtown on facebook we'll then send a text message and then if we can find them anywhere else we'll also look somewhere else so We'll leave a voicemail, so we'll call, leave a voicemail, send a Facebook message, send a text message, and then we'll try to find them if we can find them on Instagram, Snapchat, um, or Twitter. So, so I need so to guys, engage, engage in those four different areas. Guys, did you hear that? So, so every single client they're communicating with email, text, Facebook, and then they're out finding where else is this family uh, right. doing life, and they're. They're not, I assume they're not only asking, how would you prefer that I communicate? They're figuring it out. So like every client is, it's, totally. it's like, how do I turn everybody into a digital yep. friend? Like, What's cool, my friend? go ahead. Yep. What's cool, Dave, is on the back end of our system on Boomtown, every time the client finally responds, because we talked about a lot of noise we create to try to get a response. If they respond via email, that's how they like to communicate. If they respond via text, that's how they like to communicate. If they call us, that's how they like to communicate. And in each client's um, lead profile, there's a, a cell that says description. And my agents will put in that description the best way to communicate with the lead. But they can also go into the history and see how they communicated with the lead in the past. So what I didn't get into into our lead conversion strategy is if an, a lead indicates they're buying or selling in three to six months, my agent has to call, text, Facebook message, or tweet them every 15 days. And if they indicate they're buying or selling in six to 12 months, my agents have to do the same every 30 days. And so the agents rotate through the way that they communicate with the lead unless the lead is indicated the way that they would best like to be communicated with. This is a huge topic. And this is going to matter the most out of everything we do going into the future. And I think our communication is going to continue to get watered down. There's tons of other apps we haven't even talked about, like WhatsApp, uh, Marco Polo. You know, you on, on an iPhone, you can do a little voice recording. And so I love the point you brought up to know what's the best way to communicate. Communicate in the way the client communicates with you and have some way to know the last way you communicated with them. And the guess would be that most people want to communicate the same way that they've already communicated with you the last time. Love, love that. Great advice. I've had a number of people want a little more color around your vision boards. Since that was such an important personal motivator, also as a team leader, if you could yeah. just describe them in a little bit. Do you want to see mine? How you manage it? Yeah, bring I'll it. E I'll email you mine. I don't know how quick we can get that up here, but. No, no, why don't you do this? Put it in our Facebook group. Okay. Why don't you push that, put a post after the call. Cool. Here's an example of my vision board. And cool. then, by the way, if anyone on this call has a vision board, take a picture of it, put it in comments. Let's yeah. get a whole conversation around. Well, guys, it, it, does, it, it does. Mine's going to be digital day. Sorry to cut you off again. Mine's going to be a digital board. It doesn't have to be digital. In the olden days, people used to subscribe to magazines and they'd cut out pictures of the magazine that represented their dreams. If you want to go OG, then just grab a bunch of pictures from magazines and cut them up and stick it on a board and take a picture of that. So when my agents present, I've seen flip charts, I've seen present iPad presentations. Vision board is lo a loose term to simply be, what are the images of the things that are you're leading and living your life to accomplish? And then that board has to live in front of you. So it can be your phone background, it can be on your desk, it can be you know at where you work out. You need to be thinking about it every single day. That's what's gonna drive you to get past that crappy call, the crappy client, the bad, the ticket you got driving home last night. You know, we have all these moments and we use them as excuses to eat poorly and to not work the next day. We need more things that help us have excuses to work harder, to accomplish more, to work out, eat better, et cetera. Love, love that. Uh, I wanna close up, we've got six minutes. You talked about that formula, you know, how many calls, how many contacts, I think it's worth repeating as we close. You know, what is the formula? And yeah. then, and then, by the way, everyone, I want to I want to get a whole conversation around that. What is your success formula for every single loan that you close? So, what is your success formula yeah. that you're teaching everybody? We've been tracking this for over three years. We found that if we make five outbound prospecting calls, one person answers. If nine people answer, one will agree to an appointment. If we go on one and a half appointments, we'll sell one property. 
net net 150 outbound calls equals one sale averaging a six thousand dollar commission if i gave the agent that lead i get to keep half of that which is three thousand dollars so if i can create a wheel that kicks out leads and if you partner with an agent that creates a wheel that kicks out leads if they're working the leads the way i've explained they should be working to convert at three percent you can expect a one thousand percent return on investment love that so by the way that's just success formula what is your success formula we're going to put that in the chat and then by the way closing question we got five minutes john just asked he said does jeff bottle his energy so obviously you have killer energy he also made a note that we're both standing so i i know personally oh, yeah. i stand a lot when You're i much when better I'm on a podcast with, yeah well if you're ever interviewed on a podcast set your laptop put up some boxes and stand you just feel so much better yeah so but let's just talk about energy management because at the end of the day it all starts with what is the energy we bring to the day and some of that i think is a gift i mean i have it you have it but but let's yeah. talk about some advice for folks just riddle off a minute's worth of you want to upgrade your energy here's some ideas yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna steal hal elrod's book um the miracle morning he talks about his savers s-a-v-e-r-s I'm gonna miss a couple of them, but he talks about how he interviewed some of the top billionaires all across the world and found out that they're all really good at doing one or two things every day that he thinks has attributed to their success. But you can capture, encapsulate all of those successful habits and apply them in less than one hour. So he suggests every day for 10 minutes, you scribe, you do affirmations. So savers, S-A-V, vision. So you visualize. E is exercise. R is... Um, I know one of them, uh, the last S is um, spiritual, which could be yoga or prayer. And then R is reading. So in one hour, you do 10 minutes of each of those and it gets you jacked. I don't do all of the savers, but I do a handful. I work out every morning. I just got done doing an hour CrossFit workout with three other people from my real estate team. And then we sat in my hot tub for 30 minutes. And then I had two huge drinks of water. And that helps me show up this way for this appointment. But this is how I'm wired. If you guys ever see me at an event or Dave, we're kicking it wherever you are. Um, I'm, I'm pretty wired, man. And I'm always just excited. I'm, I want to have fun. If it's not fun, I'm not doing it. So I wouldn't even be here today if I didn't know I was going to have a good time with you. I want to make sure I invite everyone to our summit, Dave, if you let me do a guiltless plug on that. It's the next slide. Not, I was, I was going to close it with how do we, how do we communicate with you? How do we engage with you? And how do we, so learn more from you? we are hosting the first ever keep going team building summit in Omaha, Nebraska, May 8th, 9th, and 10th. It's designed for residential real estate agents but it will apply to any loan officer. We're bringing in six of the nation's top real estate team leaders that are wired just like me. We're gonna do a 30 minute spotlight of each of their businesses. You can see the list over here on the right. Uh, we've got Daniel Beers, um, Mary Maloney, um, uh, operations manager from Chris Waters team down in Austin. They're the number one team in Austin, Texas. Greg Harrelson, number one agent in the country. Um, ballers, Greg McDaniels has a huge podcast following. And then we have keynotes from Boomtown's director of sales, um, Rivers Pierce. We have the CEO of Rockerbox and the CEO of Viral Marketing and a high up marketing contact at Dotloop. And we partnered with Dotloop, Rockerbox and Viral to bring the first ever team building summit exclusively um, across all brokerage brands for people wanting to build teams. So of course, any loan officer wanting to build a team or that already has one, it's 297 bucks to attend a two day event. It's breakfast and lunch included. The VIP ticket gets you front row seating and private party and two breakout Q&A lunches. Um, but you can find out all the information on the website, theteambuildingsummit.com, and you can purchase tickets through Eventbrite through that website as well. So would love you guys to come join us. It's, it's in less than 60 days, but it's going to be a huge value add. It'll be in Omaha. It's not cold here in May, so don't be scared to come check out my neck of the woods. It'll be a great time. It's in downtown Omaha. Love it. So, Jeff, you knocked it out of the park. I want to remind everybody in just two hours, I'm going to be interviewing Mari Smith, queen of Facebook live in the mortgage coach productivity mastermind facebook group so if you're a mortgage professional and you are not part of this community get in we will approve any loan officer or realtor uh jeff you knocked it out of the park super grateful for the value let's push a quick poll question if we surpassed your expectations with value let us know if you got a couple good takeaways let us know that if you are a guest and you are not a member of Mortgage Coach, you want to get a demo, click the last option and we will get you on board. So Jeff, you knocked it out of the park, brother. Uh, the vast majority have said, wow, you completely surpassed expectations. Uh, I appreciate you, brother. 
Looking All forward right. to our next call. If you are watching this on a recording and you got value, like it. Give us a like on the YouTube channel and forward this to your mortgage friends. Forward this to anybody you think would get value. If, if, anyone, if anyone wants to get in touch with me, EliteRealEstateSystems.com on Facebook, just follow us. And uh, we put a ton of content out there for agents. So recommend your agents come follow us on there as well. And it's 17 bucks a month. Like I said, to have full access to our eight hours of content a month. Thanks, Dave. I appreciate the opportunity, man. Hey, remember to put your uh, vision board on our we'll Facebook group and maybe share a couple links to the things that you've mentioned. Cool. Thank we'll you, do. brother. Later, man. Bound. Take care. See ya. See ya.